was good. So good, in fact, I think I'll have another one straight away. Things that are good. You'll know them when they happen because you'll want them to happen all over again. Going on a roller coaster and immediately running back to the front of the queue. Taking a sneaky sick day and then taking another sneaky sick day. Finishing a really good game and straight away starting it from the beginning. We've all done it, haven't we? Games that for whatever reason we just don't want to end. Games with hidden secrets or unlockable extras. Games that you have to play at least twice. Here are seven of my favourites. You'd think, wouldn't you, that after 50 odd hours of heaving your way through one of the most difficult games of last generation, the absolute last thing you'd want to do would be to start all over again. But after sticking it to Gwyn Lord of Cinder and pasting smug self-satisfied posts all over Twitter, you'll see New Game Plus winking seductively from the gloom of Dark Souls' menu screen. Ooh, the inherently positive connotations of the word plus have sparked a compulsive reaction in my reward-addicted gaming brain. Let's play Dark Souls again, from the beginning. The big draw of New Game Plus, especially with Dark Souls, is that you get to keep loads of high-level gear, which you will need because all the enemies are now even harder. This keeps happening incrementally until Dark Souls peaks at New Game Plus 6, the level at which From Software presumably thought, we'll leave it there, who's gonna find the hours to play Dark Souls to completion seven times? Yeah, it's sore throat this time. Yeah, all week. Mass Effect is a series just begging to be replayed, and not just because it's a thundering space epic that redefined how AAA titles approached video game narrative, not just because it's one of the richest worlds in the history of the medium, not just because you get to make meaningful moral choices. No, I wanted to play through Mass Effect again just so I could make Commander Shepard the biggest douchebag in the galaxy. As you probably already know, you can choose to go down one of two paths in Mass Effect. There's the Paragon, who's all like, yay, common good. Or there's the Renegade, who will interrupt you mid-sentence to chuck you out a window. Oh man, it's so much fun, especially seeing as how on your first playthrough you sort of feel compelled to be nice because the story hangs off the back of Shepard being a selfless hero. Playing as a renegade on your second playthrough is so liberating though, a cathartic outpouring of virtual anger that feels like Bioware handing you a special screw this nonsense story pass that doesn't just skip cutscenes, it punches them in the face. Now that's the kind of society I'd like to live in. Someone annoys you, you can just smack them. And it's a puppet. Another reason to give Bioware's games a second, third or even fourth playthrough is all the lovely romance options, but we'll use Dragon Age to illustrate this because it gives us a list entry without me having to think too much. Pretty much every party member in the series can be, under the right circumstances, seduced into doing naughty things behind a fade to black, but if you want to see what's underneath everyone's plus nine garters of celibacy, you'll need to put the playthroughs in, although no matter how many times Dave boots up Dragon Age Origins, he only seems to have eyes for one man. And how many times have you played it now? Seven. Okay. And every time you romance the same person? Every time. Okay. I'm going to show you a series of images and I want you to tell me what you see. Uh, Alistair. 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 Alice. Final Fantasy VIII is a game I personally played through four times, and not because of New Game Plus, there isn't one, and not because of making narrative choices, you can't, and not because of all the romance options, it's Renoa, lump it. I had to play Final Fantasy VIII again, and this is true for all three of the PS1 era Final Fantasies, because there's just so much to uncover, it's practically impossible to do it all first time. Plus there's the fact I couldn't get my idiot 12 year old brain around the junctioning system first time, so I ended up at Ultima Sears Castle with hardly any GFs and 16 blizzards linked to my strength stat. If you don't speak Final Fantasy, imagine Dave fighting that dinosaur again with a spoon. 
Second time, however, it clicked. I got everyone's ultimate weapon, scoured every inch of the world map and fought Bahamut, obtained Eden the ultimate summon, and carved Ultima Sia to pieces with a crack team of 9999 damage dealing super seeds. Still took me until my fourth playthrough to finally take down Omega Weapon though. Bloody Terror Break spamming git. Hey Dave, do you like my new t-shirt? Yeah. Well, guess what game's coming next? To be fair, I could have put any of the Metal Gear Solids in here. You have to play Snake Eater at least twice to try out all the special camouflage. Guns of the Patriots needs a minimum of eight playthroughs if you want the Platinum Trophy. Sons of Liberty wants at least three just to understand what the friggin' hell's going on. But the one I'm going for is the one. Metal Gear Solid, the original PS1 classic. There aren't any trophies or emblems to unlock, but if you do what I did and play it on easy, and let Meryl die, you get to play it again with the stealth suit. And my god, if that isn't the most fun I've ever had with any video game, the guards just don't have a clue you're there. What was that noise, they ask, idiotically as you dance through a puddle right under their noses. It was thanks to the stealth suit I found out you could plant C4 on enemies' backs and also do my favourite thing, which was to journey over to level B1 in the nuclear warhead storage building and stand behind guards as they went to the loo. I can see you, Rob. Will you just leave me alone? Next up, we've got Dishonored, a game I suspect many of you played through stealthily on your first playthrough because playing as a masked assassin, you naturally veer towards remaining unseen in the shadows. And the game is awesome like that. You can sneak up on people, stab them quietly, and come up with all sorts of cheeky ways to kill off your targets. Then you finish the game and think, hmm. I wonder what it would be like if I just beat the crap into everyone instead. Just as much fun is the answer. Corvo's offensive powers, many of which would have gone ignored in a stealth playthrough, finally get the exposure they deserve. New gameplay options emerge and you realise what a beautifully layered role-playing experience Dishonored is, wonderfully tailored to suit whatever style you prefer. On top of that, there are also multiple routes built into each level so you get to experience that back-of-the-box friendly moment when regaling your friends with your unique adventure. I loved killing Overseer Campbell. I poisoned his wine. Really? I just shot him. There it is. There's the moment right there. Magic. Before I made this video, I sent a tweet asking what games you guys went back to play through multiple times. And one game came up more than any other. Don't complain. You have spoken. It's The Last of Us. Why? There's no special reward. You don't get to play as David or anything and the story's over. But what you can do, apparently, is play it on grounded difficulty, where there's no listening mode, supplies are practically non-existent, enemy AI is super sharp, and they all do triple damage. What the hell's wrong with you people? This is perhaps the ultimate reason to go back and play games over and over, to experience them at their absolute hardest. The Last of Us is brutal and tense as it is, so playing it relying solely on your wits and expert knowledge of where all the enemies are is, I'm guessing, absolutely riveting. I say guessing because there's no bloody way you'll catch me playing it on Grounded. If I've missed out any games you love playing through multiple times, let us know what they are in the comments. Give this video a like, don't worry, the badger's fine, and subscribe for more Friday features every Friday. <laughs>